In this video, we are going to discuss components. Now, Lee, as best you can, generally speaking, define for us what is a component. A component is a grouping of functionality and parameters that will define what a game object does. I like it. That's pretty good. Now, you did bring up a critical thing uh, in that components, and I'll just kind of paraphrase, Components define game objects. Now the reason this is important is that really, as far as I'm concerned, to fully understand components and why you use them and what they're good for, you need to already know what game objects are. So if you're watching these videos in a different order than the order in which we recorded them, you, if you don't already know what a game object is, jump back and understand that first. And then you can see how components augment game objects and turn them into other things by defining their functionality. Quite literally, a game, uh, I'm sorry, a component is just a, as Lee said, it's just a modular piece of functionality. Now let's jump into Unity real quick. And let's talk about this. Now underneath, we have two menus here. We have a game object menu and we have a component menu. And underneath the component menu, you can see all of the different types of components that you could add to any given game object to turn them into something. And if this is all you had in front of you when you used Unity, it would probably be really daunting and really scary and you'd never want to use the program because to make even the simplest object, you'd have to bring in an empty game object and six or seven or anywhere from anywhere from two to maybe three or four or five or six different components would have to be bolted onto it for every single thing. Fortunately, you can go into a game object and create other and you can create kind of, I don't want to say the word prefab, but prefabricated or well, pre-designed. Base templates. Base templates of objects that are really just a game object with some components already attached to them. A really good example would be a point light. So here's a point light. It's just a singular point in space that emits light. And you can see it emitting the light on the ground and we can move it around. And of course that's very, very cool. But if we take a look in the inspector, it's just a game object with this little transform component, and then it has a light component attached to it. Well, that's interesting. So what if we take our little light object, let's pull back a little bit from it. Let's go and create a brand new empty game object, which the shortcut for that, if you need to know it, is Control Shift N. And that made a brand new game object that we can't really see, unless I move around a little bit. So there it is. It's completely separate from our light but it's empty. So now what I'm going to do is go under my component menu and let's jump underneath rendering and underneath rendering you'll see the light component. So we can drop this onto our game object. You'll notice it's already set to point and we could maybe bring down its range a little bit. And we get essentially the exact same behavior except now we've created it by manually adding the components where earlier on we got it from that template where it was already a, a game object that had a light component attached to it. So I just want to kind of stress that if you're playing with this kind of stuff for the first time, which again, these terminology videos are really for those of you out there who are just trying to get familiar with Unity for the very first time ever. When you go underneath the game object menu and you go to create other, or alternatively, you go underneath your hierarchy panel and go underneath create, by the way, they're both the exact same list. What you are creating is an empty game object that already has a series of components attached to it to handle some task or another. Now let's give just a, I'll give one more quick example and just kind of show you how out there you can get with this. What I'm going to do is start off by creating a sphere. So let's just go under create and I'll make a sphere. And you'll notice this has a few things in it. It has a mesh filter component, it has a sphere collider component, and it has a mesh renderer component. All of these are doing different jobs. The mesh filter is just giving us vertex locations for this particular model. It's just allowing us to have that model stored in memory. It doesn't even show us the model. It's just giving us a reference to all of those vertices. The actual showing of the model is here inside the mesh render, and I'll prove it to you. If we come over here and uncheck mesh render, thereby disabling it, 
the sphere essentially disappears. Now this little green wireframe still remains and that is the sphere collider which is used by the physics system to calculate the radius of the sphere so if you were to run it as a, a rigid body or a physical simulation you could drop it and it would bounce downstairs and bounce off walls and roll across the ground all that sort of thing. That is handled here inside the sphere collider. So each one of these components is doing its own individual job with the mesh filter just storing the vertices, the sphere collider setting up collisions and radii based on uh, how the physics uh, engine is going to have to work with this, and then our mesh render, which is showing us our actual model. But we can add other components too. We can delete components if we like. We could grab, say, the sphere collider and say, well, we didn't really need that. Let's just right click and remove it. Because if we never needed this sphere to actually collide, that's one less calculation to deal with. We could just remove that component altogether. If we change our mind, we could go back under component, jump down under physics. Now, I do want to mention this. I don't expect any of you to know where all of these different components are going to be stored inside this menu straight out of the gate. You'll, you'll get used to it with a lot of practice. That's right. You'll get used to it. It's probably not entirely a bad idea to study up and, and read through what's available in each one. But we could drop, say, a box collider onto it. And so now all of the physics calculations would take place on this object as if it were a box, even though it looks like a sphere. And then we could remove that. So like, oh, that was a bad idea. So let's remove that. And let's go back under component physics. And we'll re-add our sphere collider. We can also add other components as well. We could go under component and just like we did before we could go underneath rendering and add a light. And now this mesh will literally appear to emit light in our scene. And you can use this for all kinds of tricks. You could put a material on that sphere that made it look like a bright glowing ball and now with a light component attached to it it would appear to truly emit light and potentially even shadows and whatnot right into your scene. That's the very idea behind components. They are just modular definitions of functionality that you can add onto your game objects. Now, as you continue working with Unity, you're going to see components a lot. You're going to be working with them. You'll be adding them, removing them. Uh, they're going to come in on a lot of objects that you just create. And so it's vital that you get used to seeing them here inside the inspector. Remember that if you see too much, you can collapse any one of these at any given time. And that's all kind of stuff that will uh, be tied into a more inspector-based discussion, of course. But I just want you to be aware of you know, that you're going to be coming into here and adjusting this modular functionality. So, Lee, is there anything else you want to throw in? Mm, just a recap in the fact that a game object is a game object. And the only thing different between a game object that is the terrain or a tree or a light or your campfire is what components have been bolted onto it. That's exactly right. And that will wrap things up for this video. Thanks for watching.